Well, welcome guys, thanks for checking out this video. So I'm finally here now in my new setup. I managed to try and move all my stuff over. So I'm pretty excited to jump in and make some more video and contents for this channel. Now, when I originally was gonna make another video about the Retro Pocket 2, it was just gonna cover some features that I missed out on and kind of cover some content that we would like and perhaps discuss about on what the Retro Pocket 3 would be like and what things that we would want this Retro Pocket 3 to be. But in the process of making that video, I accidentally broke the Retro Pocket 2, which I'll, I'll go ahead and explain later on in the video, and hopefully you guys won't make the same mistake. So the direction of this video has kind of changed, but I have managed to actually recover some of the footage that I made before actually breaking the device. So I'm gonna go ahead and describe some of the extra features, the main features being the Android-based games, and some actual troubles of me trying to purchase a new retro pocket and there's been quite a lot of troubles especially in this time of year to try and get them over into the UK so you guys know we've actually been placing orders and I'm just right to appreciate your understanding and your patience regarding these struggles so now let's head over to Android based games and some also covering some footage on how to not break your retro pocket too and some features that we probably would like and discuss about about what we would want for the retro pocket 3 as it comes with a 1.5 GHz processor and a 1 GB of RAM, I was quite surprised with how it was handling some light 3D based games. Here's just a few I tried out. Horizon Chase, a great game that also has a PlayStation 4 console release. Obviously it is homage to the great user Zuki's Outrun and Super Hang On, but it's just those few exclusive titles that were brought only to the Android is mostly what I'm interested in. Just a personal take that I like with this device. When it comes to compatibility, you are of course limited to how graphically demanding the game is in the first place and also the version of Android you are using. In this case, with this updated Retro Pocket 2, I'm using the version 8.1. With the stock version that a lot of you people probably still have, it is on 6.1. Fortunately, I haven't gone through a mad testing spree on Android games to see if some games are more compatible with the 6.1 or the 8.1 version. But I can show you the 8.1 version does operate a little quicker, making it more enjoyable to access these Android games to download on the device. If you'd like to know how to update your Retro Pocket 2, I will just pop that in the corner for you and also put the link in the description box below. One major feature which is kind of obvious when playing Android games on this device is of course if they are controller supported, so you are really limited to what is available on the store. Now with a lot of these Android games you may find you also need to download is the Android Play app. Now this does work fine with the Retro Pocket 2, but it does take up that little bit more of excess RAM to actually load up. So I did find some games did slow down a little bit and also booting up the game in the first place does take that little longer. But depending on which game, some games are also close all together, so you may need to reset and load up the game. This is where the Retro Pocket 2 is limited. There are a couple of apps that you can download that filter the games on the Google Store that use only the game controller. But the ones that I just personally use, I did find that they would take quite a long to boot up and they weren't the best to use. So I do recommend just trying to find out what games are compatible on the Play Store that only use the controller. Well, not only, but have compatibility with Joypad controllers. And when it comes to games that you can download that are really heavy with adverts, I did find that the Retro Pocket 2 would struggle because they couldn't actually use all that RAM up. So, and the fact that it's not a touchscreen device, it was quite hard to just navigate around to close down these adverts. And sometimes it may also cause the games to crash. So if you actually download some of the games, I do recommend if they do not have any adverts at all, or if you just purchase them out, if they're 2D based games or light 3D based games, and you're keen enough to actually purchase it, I do recommend that myself. Now, before I go ahead into some recommendations of a Retro Pocket 3, let's cover is it actually worth getting one yourself now and what struggles have I been going through on ordering a new one? Now, this is just my experience as well, but I've heard a fair few people has been waiting to about one to three months or even longer on getting their orders delivered due to supply and demand, which I, when I tried to order a new one, I was hit with pretty high postage costs on just where I was looking. So you may experience different postage costs on where you're actually 
placing your order in the first place. At the time and when I placed my order for my new one, it was the same time as Chinese New Year, so I was held back about two weeks before my order got processed, which is perfectly fine and understandable, but it just added those two weeks. Now, due to the conditions that we are in, the actual postage had to be resent three times. So that was kind of understandable as well because of the conditions we're in. But since after the Chinese year, New Year, I've had, experienced some great service from deliveries from China, but for some reason with these Retro Pocket 2s, they have been held back. So for some reason, they have been causing an issue with deliveries, but for, I am now finally confirmed that they are finally on its way. So now let's get into how I shamefully broke my Retroid Pocket 2, which of course was so annoying as I was really getting into it at that time. And I've placed now any videos on the Retroid Pocket 2 on hold for now until I get my replacement or even this fixed. Well, when I actually took this apart just to show any possible areas of improvement and suggestions for a Retroid Pocket 3, as I place back the actual board into it and then put the case on, I didn't put much of a force onto it, but the micro switches that you see on the top, which are the power button and the volume up and down, you can see some micro little switches. And I basically, as I close that, they, they snapped off quite easily, which I actually found out when I put it all together, they weren't there. <laughs> So my advice when you actually take this apart, I do recommend not doing it in the first place, but if you want to have a nose around, watch out for these micro switches because they were quite easy to break off. Any help will be appreciated or any recommendations and comments in the box below. Now I don't have actually any knowledge on building any device like this. My experience is next to none. So here's just a couple of recommendations and thought we can actually chat and discuss about this in the box below on what we would like in the Retroid Pocket 3 when we consider the Retroid Pocket 2. For now, the micro buttons could be built a little bit better and have a better contact, creating a better feel. It is very minor but it's just a little recommendation. The back triggers could be swapped with a tactile button instead of these pressure pads. They do actually uh, work pretty fine, but if we had a little clicky button as the L2 and R3, I think that would be pretty nice. The speakers are a great side. As you open it up, you can see these two little speakers and they do sound pretty nice. So especially with the price that the retro pocket is now, but if they had a bit of an upgrade of the sound quality that could be easily replaced, that would not go amiss. Now let's head to the front of the handheld. Personally, the D-pad is placed great and the whole design of the handheld is pretty awesome. This is why I picked one up in the first place. But the D-pad could be built a little bit better, a bit more tactile, as there has been a couple of complaints on how the D-pad is actually built. But personally, compared to a lot of other Chinese devices, this is built pretty well. But when you compare it to like a Sega Saturn D-pad, it would be nice if they up in the quality of the D-pad. The analog sticks themselves kind of have a little bit room of improvement. If they could actually have a button themselves like the L3 and R3 button, that would go really nicely. When it comes to the screen, the IPS and the actual ratio of the screen is fantastic and is what actually helps me actually buy one in the first place. But a slightly bigger one would not go amiss. We're currently on around three inches, so perhaps about five inches screen. We don't want to make the device of the Retro Pocket 3 that big, but around to about five inches would be really nice. And even if the screen is actually touch screen as well, that will go really well with the DS emulator and also those Android games, making Android games more compatible with the device. Another thing I would really like to see with the Retro Pocket 3 is of course the supply and demand because these are quite popular. So that was just a fair few of my own personal inputs on what I would like to see in the future for a Retro Pocket 3. But of course that was just my own input and I'd like to hear from you guys and let me hear your recommendations in the comment box below. So yeah, fortunately there are a couple of problems with this device at the moment and I do hope that you got a better understanding on why that is. So personally, I'm a big fan of the Retro Pocket 2. It does suit my needs up to the PlayStation 1 pretty fine and a lot of people are happy with that. But personally, I am looking forward to what the Retro Pocket 3 could bring. There's no news about that at the moment, but there are some devices that are equivalent to what a Retro Pocket 3 could be. And I did cover a video on that and I'll put that up there for you to click and also in the description box below. So if there's any 
any other actual content you want me to cover on the Rectory Pocket 2, leave that in the comment box below and I'd be happy to do that for you guys. So as always, as I end my videos, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, hit that button. If you want to help and support this channel, if you're new, click subscribe, leave your comments below and I catch you guys on the next video.